The gospel tells us that they sung a hymn. Doesn't specify which one, but we know that this was the Passover, and it was a Jewish custom to sing the Hillel, or praise songs of Egypt during the celebration. They consist of Psalms 113 to 118. I don't want to speculate on things not specifically stated, but if we assume they were following their customs, imagine the awesome foreshadowing of Jesus singing Psalm 118 as he walked to Gethsemane to meditate upon his coming ordeal. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surround me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surround me, surround me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surround me like bees. They went out like fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord has helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Now, interesting side note, if you aren't familiar with the Hebrew, this literally says, my strength and my song, Yah, proper name of God, is and has become my Yeshua, or my Jesus. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open me the gates of righteousness, that I might enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. There are several messianic prophecies within that psalm quoted in the New Testament as references to Jesus. We are told in Luke that God sends an angel to Jesus to strengthen him. To really get how God works, we need to stop making such stark distinctions between the natural and the supernatural, meaning that God is sovereign over all events, so everything is in his hand, be it an overt miraculous event or just a simple helping hand. I think that Psalms like this, written centuries before the Incarnation, serve to strengthen Christ's resolve as much as the angel who was sent. It is the same for us. We cannot discount the comfort and encouragement we get from Scripture as simply natural psychological phenomenon because God is the one who designed our psyche and who inspired the Word. He knows what we need, and when the Word says that He will ensure that His elect persevere, 
it is very often that very promise of the word itself, which is how God is making us persevere.